Hello and welcome back to Sinews of War. In the previous episode, we had a sudden war declared on us by Morocco, so that was an inconvenience in Europe. But the real action was over in India, where we started our invasion, but Mysore had plenty of forces to counter it. The first army that came at us did more damage than expected, destroying a lot of our line, making our army fairly weak, although we were eventually able to defeat the enemy and kill a very large number of them. The second army that came in, though, did even more damage. Once again, we were were able to hold them off, but the cost to our manpower meant that when the third army showed up, we were no longer able to stand our ground. We had to withdraw into Portuguese territory, and the attack on Mysore was effectively called off for now. The Moroccans stormed across the Strait of Gibraltar. Capturing Gibraltar itself wasn't much we could do, but I'm starting to muster an army in Spain to see if we can counterattack. And to make it even easier, we're bringing both Nassau and Kalimba back from the West India Company to join the European theatre. The final thing we saw was an attempt at an attack on Istanbul, but we couldn't quite reach it, but very soon we'll be able to make that move. Mad at you? And here I thought they were mad at me. Well, the stat holders are want to get mad at everyone these days, and rightly so, with half the world mad at them in return. So, what did you do? Well, I'm here. You mean little goody Gaiden actually broke curfew to come and attack the enemy with the rest of the army? I'm quite amazed. All you have to do is say thank you. You can't take Istanbul on your own. I'll thank you when it's over, if thanks are in order. So, what are you meant to be doing then? Meant to be back in Athens, preparing to sail into Anatolia. The Stadtholders want they to... They want to abandon you without lines of supply in the middle of enemy territory among people who hate your Protestant guts with every fibre of their being. <laughs> yes, I rather think you're right. Well then, this is a superb learning experience, Mr. Gaiden. A general should not allow the state to interfere with their operations, for only very rarely does the state have the faintest clue what is going on. If you follow your own path, it will lead to success. That's the only secret there is to all this. And as proof, the smoke of Istanbul rises in the distance. But I wonder what they will do to me as punishment. Haven't done anything to me. They won't bite a hand that feeds them. And if they do, well, send them my way and I'll sort them out. First thing this week is it turns out that Greece actually are a little bit angry at me, probably because we occupy Athens right now. So they are declaring war on me, and you can see they're allied to the Ottoman Empire, so that's probably the driving force here. They want to support their ally and take back their natural capital, but they don't actually do anything after declaring war, so they didn't prepare for it, it seems. Meaning we are going to have time to try and react before they make any moves. Another project I need to get on with is trying to get rid of all the Imams around the Balkan area so that we can stop the spread of Islam and then eventually bring my Protestant ministers over to try and get it Protestant, that's the ideal situation, although not all that important as religious effects only have a very minor penalty to public order. So we had a new government there we just saw, but that's not all that important. And here is the Greek force. It's about half a stack right next to our vaguely unoccupied territory, so they certainly could do some damage if they wanted to. Another failure to take down this imam. That guy is getting assassination attempts every day and keeps failing. Interestingly, Dagestan has been destroyed, the mastermind behind bringing Morocco into the war against me, I presume. So nice to see that they're gone. That's going to free up a lot of states from being the protectorate of Dagestan. So the Greek army looking at it isn't particularly special. They've got some irregular forces, a main line of militia, a single artillery piece and one unit of regular cav there. Overall, nothing too special and because they haven't made a move already, I'm going to start trying to prepare. I think if they attacked, they would successfully take Athens, but if they don't, we're going to start building up troops very rapidly. Now nearby I have a ship and I'm going to use this ship to cut off the land route uh, from Istanbul over into Anatolia there because someone said that this actually helps with the end turn times and right now the end turn times are something like 20 minutes to half an hour so it's absolutely insane and it's all the Ottomans fault they have so many single unit stacks everywhere just rushing over the map you can see a bunch of them right here half of them just camped out and there are lots lots more I have had a little look deeper into their territory and there's just bajillions of them so we need to try and bring the Ottomans down just for the sake of continuing the campaign and the first step for that is going to be to take their capital Istanbul right here so what I really hope 
was that I'd be able to sneak around Istanbul and take out that reinforcement army separately. But unfortunately, we can't do that. Istanbul takes up the entire space. So that army behind it is safe, but it's also nothing really to worry about. Loads of mobbish missile units. So really, even if we did just assault Istanbul right now, it wouldn't make a huge difference. But I am going to wait just for this turn because it'd be really nice if the enemy sallied out. They do have artillery forts and it would be much easier for us to do this in a field battle. So we'll see if they're willing. Now, Calimbra has arrived, bringing Nassau and his army into Europe. For some reason, whenever I move this fleet, it massively lags out and gives me one frame per second. So I'm going to have to minimize the amount of time spent actually using this fleet. And you might remember I had initially brought them in to deal with Morocco. But now that since I've built an army up in Spain to deal with Morocco of just uh, forces built from Madrid, I thought actually we might as well use this force to deal with the Greece situation. Because if they wait a couple of turns, this fleet will arrive in Athens and give us a full stack right there, which will of course decide the war unless Greece suddenly builds a much more professional army, which I'm guessing they can't because they don't have any money. So we should be fine there as long as Greece doesn't take Athens this turn. Now, I was looking at the new government we got. Overall, fine. The army minister wasn't very good, and I actually got lucky. I kicked him out and got a nice, better guy who's going to give us cheaper upkeep and cheaper recruitment of all units, so that is going to help out. We're not making all that much money at the moment, less than we usually do, and that's actually because the Moroccans are blockading some of our trade, as you may remember from last time, so we need to go and deal with that. And that's what Almonda here is doing right now with our Mediterranean fleet. It's going to come around and take out this small Moroccan fleet here. So at first I'm just coming in to get close. I wanted to try and link up with these boats I've built here in Amsterdam so that they would reinforce, but I make a nice mistake here because I'm trying to get these guys into reinforcement range and then I accidentally click them into the interception range instead of reinforcement range, which is always hard to tell. That means they get intercepted by the enemy who have the advantage, so they have to go back to port, and that actually uses up all their movement points. I think you just lose them if you ever pick retreat during a turn, even if you didn't retreat very far. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have those ships take part in the fight, but the main fleet can just overwhelm the enemy and the battle goes fine. We even capture one of their fifth rates, so we're going to add that to our fleet to expand its power. The fleet was damaged in the engagement, so I'll have to send it into some docks somewhere to uh, try and get it repaired up, but you can see the massive difference that makes to my income getting absolutely loads of cash now. So I'll send that fleet into port to repair up. Nothing else for it to do right now, but I'm sure there are more Ottoman targets we could hit. And in fact, here's one, one possible example. A Ottoman fleet came out of the Eastern Mediterranean while I was away waiting for the turn to end and attacked my boat that was blocking the enemy from reinforcing Istanbul. So they're going to have to run away. And that means that all of those single Ottoman units around the place are going to be able to cross over and add themselves into that reinforcement army just outside their capital. So now there's actually a full stack of troops there, plus some little support armies. So overall, they've got loads, perhaps two and a half stacks worth of troops hanging around Istanbul. So they're going to reinforce much faster than us. We can't wait another turn because they'll just do it again. They've got more forces en route. So really, we have to go in for an attack and see what we can do. The balance bar still slightly in our favor but of course the enemy are going to have an artillery fort going to make life difficult for us so really it looks like it's going to be a single decisive battle for the ottoman capital here it's all of our forces versus all of theirs in the area let's see how the battle goes why are these enemies here at our gates it is because of cowardice it is because of unworthy men who would rather live in shame than die with honor in service to their sultan and to mighty allah and now, because of the disgrace they have brought to their names, it falls to we men of higher calling to end this madness. None of you are like the men who fled before the Dutch. None of you lack the strength or courage to do the work Allah will give you today. None of you are so foolish as to believe that your souls will be spared if even a thought of retreat or surrender crosses your mind. All this I know, for you are standing here on ground walked by the Sultan himself, ground blessed by the greatest men of the last thousand years. Show me how you are worthy of this honor. As the battle begins, we're immediately going to get reinforcements. It's Gaiden's army on the field at first, and Voss's army as reinforcements. The enemy got plenty of reinforcements too, of course. But with the 20 unit limit, neither side actually going to get very many of their reinforcements to start with. We only get Voss, the enemy, just getting a couple of units creeping onto the field. I've got all my cavalry, as you can see, there set up to actually intercept the enemy's reinforcements. I thought I might kill some of their units before they make it to the fort, just to make life easier. While we wait for my artillery to just try and bring the fort down, 
down. We've got plenty of time and I've got a nice artillery position on this hill here. So I'm just going to pound the corner of the fort to try and make an entrance for myself so we don't have to do any climbing actions with the main force. That main force is going to just sneak away from the fort to make sure we're not in range of the enemy's mortars. They've got two mortar teams inside. So those cavalry are going to make that interception of the enemy's reinforcements, but it's not actually all that useful for me because a lot of the enemy's, enemy's reinforcements coming in, especially initially, are some of their better units, their camels and their cavalry, making it hard for my cavalry to make a real impact. Their infantry there and amongst them will be killed and routed quite easily, so that's going to be good. So I was thinking I might try and just kill every unit as it came onto the field to destroy all those armies, but actually since there's that 20 unit limit, I could also just wait and... Um, try and capture the fort without killing any whole enemy units and that will also stop them from joining the battle so that's another option but right now we're trying the first approach we're battling with more cavalry more camels coming onto the field there as i detach a group off to try and take them out you can't target units until they're fully on the field unfortunately so i can't really take them by surprise there go those cavalry freeing up more of my cav to go back and attack the enemy's infantry who are sneaking onto the field over there. So, a bit of micromanagement, but there's not much else to do since we are just waiting for that fort wall to go down. We've already taken over half its health off at this point, so we're just going to keep pounding away. The enemy have abandoned it with many of their troops, so we may not get many kills once it goes down. Some enemy infantry over here tried forming a square to resist my cavalry attack, a good idea, but I thought I have so many cavalry, I'll try just barreling through and causing them to come out of square formation because they're under attack from the inside. Didn't really work and actually we lost a decent number of cavalry trying to get in like that, so although the square appears to have just lost its shape, it still has that bonus against cavalry, making it hard to kill them. Over here in this other group, more camels and enemy cavalry making it hard for my men to really continue this fight. They're about to get rear attacked by a group coming back from routing. It was around this point I decided, you know, we're not going to be able to really effectively take out so many enemies with just those cavalry units. So we might as well let them come in to just fill their 20 units up and then try and take the fort without any more coming in to help if we can so we're going to scarper from these engagements these two units rushing to the edge of the map trying to escape i should be able to bring them right around the fort to rejoin the main force they did actually have one unit who pursued them so i thought we might as well as our last little battle for these cav try and take these guys down i don't get a very good charge at all the enemy charging right into my men and inflicting damage but now this second group will come in to rear attack the enemy so we will be able to bring those cav down and we also finish off those Berber musketmen over here, but the enemy come in with more cavalry to fight his Baghdad cavalry, a Lancer unit with high charge but low melee stats, so now that they're in combat, we will be able to just overwhelm them relatively easily. So after a short fight, both groups are going to be able to get far away from the enemy's reinforcement direction and make sure they can sit secure. Although actually my northern group was chased also, this time by some camels. So you can see I'm just setting up a nice sandwich for those camels to come into, getting a slightly longer charge this time. Camels good against cavalry, but they have very low morale. So you don't have to kill very many of them to make them leave. So we're just going to swarm them there. There's the other group making its escape right back to our line. Actually almost losing one of its units to routing because the enemy's mortars gave them a few shots as they came near the fort so that was a shame those units really damaged by that combat really didn't go as well as they thought it would there go those camels nice and easy that little engagement so we're going to pursue them a little bit kill some and then just set up on the edge of the map to allow the enemy to come into the fort with anything they can fit into their army so it's all in one place so we've taken down one of the pieces of the fort a little bit later on, we've got that corner exposed, that gives us a way in, but there's still plenty of time on the clock, so I'm looking around and thinking I might as well take down another piece. This fort has lots of indestructible parts, all you can do is take down each corner. So that means my next move is going to be to bring the artillery position over to have decent line of sight in one of the other corners. Luckily, there's a nice little hill here on the edge of the map I can use for just that. Going to bring their support troops over as well. We've got Vosgaiden and a unit of Cav guarding those artillery in case the enemy happen to rush out of their fort. But I think it's pretty unlikely they haven't shown any signs they're going to do any aggressive action. So now I just have to wait for ages for them to come across the map, set up and bring down that wall. Eventually it happens, but you can see it's actually happening at like three frames per second. Second. For whatever reason, during the time between the destruction of the first part of the wall and the second, something happened to this battle that caused it to start going at a really low tick rate. The frame rate's actually still high, technically. We're still getting 60 frames, but only three ticks, meaning the game is just processing itself very slowly, but you can see the camera movements are still nice and smooth. So, very strange situation here. So, the entire enemy army sorry, has just bunched up in the center of the fort. They're not really defending the walls anymore, and they don't really need to, with the walls obviously just being knocked down. So, it's really time to just 
go in and try and kill them. There's no easy way to do this. It's going to be a very bloody engagement in the center, just going to challenge their victory point. I'm going to make life easier for myself by withdrawing my weak cavalry, and that's going to help because we have stronger cavalry waiting in the reinforcement army. So if we free up space by sending out the ones that are almost routing anyway, then we'll get fresh ones in to increase our strength. But Actually, the real lesson I'm learning in attempting to withdraw them is that this low tick rate is causing issues with the control of the battle because you have to give orders when one of the processing ticks is happening for stuff to happen. You can see our troops stuttering across the battlefield here as they try to fulfill their order. So this isn't very nice. I think it might be something to do with the smoke effects coming off the fort. It's affecting the enemy as well, so it could be problematic. Oh, certainly something does not agree with me. I must say, I rather think I should dismount. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm sure it's passing. Just feeling faint over something. These unfamiliar airs seem to have shocked my body a little. Truly, we advanced too fast, even my own skin to deal with. <laughs> oh dear, I need to sit down. I think we might need to send runners out. Tell the men to return to camp. No sense attacking without me, if this will clear up by tomorrow. If Gaiden insists he can do it himself, tell him he'll do it without my men in that case. Does no one else feel lightheaded? It's not the smoke. Yes, order withdrawal. Let the guns have their day in the meantime. But uh, don't tell the men why, you hear? This mysterious low tick rate was actually becoming such an issue that I decided I was going to call the battle off entirely. I just couldn't play it effectively like this. So I'm giving the order to all of these infantry to just withdraw and they turn and stutter their way towards the edge of the map to leave the battlefield. We can, if we withdraw everyone, simply have them survive the battle and come again to fight another day. While the withdrawal is happening, I'm just going to pound the enemy's fort with all of my guns. So I might as well just kill a load of enemies on my way out so that when we come back there'll be less defending it and that's working quite successfully that breach in the wall gives me a nice big gap to shoot through the balls falling amongst the enemy not actually doing all that much i expected these hits to be killing loads of enemies since they were so bunched together but Sometimes even direct hits right at the feet of horsemen seem to not kill them. I'm not 100% sure how this artillery damage actually works. But we are going to be killing someone nonetheless, so we might as well keep firing. And now I'm going to try and get these guys to withdraw as well. And you can see the control issue. I think I give about six attempts here to select this group of men. And it works twice, so about a third of the time it's possible to make a click register under this weird low tick system, which is really unfortunate. So that's just evidence more that we need to not bother with this battle, because we'll probably end up taking many more losses than we need to because we can't actually give orders so these men are going to start withdrawing luckily withdrawing towards the nearest edge and not going to walk across the battlefield to come in on the edge or go off sorry on the edge they came in on so that's lovely this cavalry over here who we need to withdraw as well struggling to select them <laughs> you can see how annoying this is finally we get them and they are going to walk off now what's going to happen when i withdraw is that voss's army will come onto the field so my plan is just to withdraw them the second they enter battle so that we don't have any troops left on the field and once everyone's gone the battle should come to an end and it won't just uh, delete your troops or say that you lost which is what happens if you just say quit battle i think the troops left on the field get sort of auto resolved with the remaining uh, enemy troops and some of them will die. Now a big problem started to emerge from my plan to withdraw and that is that many of my troops seemed to refuse to leave. You can see what's happening here is that when the unit leaves many of the troops actually turn around and come back onto the battlefield. You can see it still says they're withdrawing on the uh, tooltip and I can't select them or anything. Many of them actually also failed to withdraw just because they got stuck on the terrain. But I guess we can't expect anything more. They're all stuck on those houses. Some of them managing to withdraw successfully. But yes, it's the ones that are coming back in that are the main worry because they're just out of control and just running around on the battlefield and they can still be killed as we'll learn later on. So a potential issue. And that slightly ruins my plan to just sit here and shoot the enemy's fort into submission until the time limit runs out and then just withdraw the cannons because now I'm probably not going to have all that time since my own men are going to start killing themselves unless I get the battle to end before they start running into the enemy fort. So I'm going to try and sort that out. I'm trying to actually here just select the units and do something with them, but it's not happening. Now, there's one other issue with the reinforcements. You can see a reinforcement unit coming onto the field here, but I can't select it even though it's well onto the field and they're just walking straight forward. And that's because these guys here are stuck in the corner between the line and this building and they're part of that unit. And since the unit isn't entirely on the field, I can't control it. And it seems it stops the rest of the army that was coming in as reinforcements from coming in. It's waiting for this unit to finish coming onto the field before it gets 
gets the rest out. So overall, just a disaster in terms of my plan to withdraw and then get the reinforcements to withdraw. We are getting a glitched left, right and center here. Very unfortunate. And of course, the tick rate making it difficult to actually control through the remainder of the battle. We are going to get some nice hits on the enemy at least though. You can see here the slow motion gore as our shots land amongst the enemy and not really killing anyone. You see one guy fall down from that cannon shot. This shot killing a few more but just expecting more damage to be done with these really direct hits into these crowds of enemies but unfortunately not doing all that much. These aren't the best cannons anyway, some of them only demi cannons. So at this point in the battle I need to withdraw the cannons as well and start them on their route out so that they'll leave the battle before my men go and just rampage into the enemy's fort. Once again, having a very large amount of trouble actually selecting the cannons so I can give them the order to withdraw, but I got it eventually and they started on their way out. There they go now. So they're withdrawing, the generals and their cavalry have withdrawn as well at this point. So they're just going to try and get to the edge of the map and then I'll give them the final withdrawal order. And the rest of my men, well, they're going to advance. This unit of reinforcements is advancing right into the center of the enemy's fort on its own for no particular reason. And all these men doing the same thing, just running at the fort. They're all determined to get inside, it seems, without orders. And this, as you might expect, could cause an issue because we don't want to be losing all these troops before the battle ends. This guy has the right idea. One of these troops sort of got halfway towards the fort and thought, you know what, maybe we are supposed to be going off the battlefield. And he left, but everyone else, they are determined to make this attack for some reason, so we'll just have to see if we can get out in time. Of course we're not actually meant to withdraw. This is Voss we're talking about. It's a scheme. He's going to make the Turks think we've left so they get all comfy. Meanwhile, we sneak up and get the drop on them right in the middle of their own fort. Bloody brilliant. No wonder you thought he was being serious. You've got nothing between your ears. Look over there, see? That's one of Voss's regiments. They're heading right for the breach. They'll cause some ruckus there while we go right through the gates. Look, the enemy have left them wide open. Clearly they've taken Voss's bait, hook, line, sinker, rod and bayonet. This is going to be good, boys. Let's keep it steady. Let those idiots go back if they want. That's all the more glory for us. Even Voss, Gaiden and their cavalry guards suffered from the problem of not really wanting to leave the battlefield. The majority trying to make their escape there, but many coming back. I thought it might have been that those infantry units were bouncing off the buildings in some way, but these guys had no reason to come back. They just turned around while leaving and came straight back in. So I don't know what, really what the cause of this glitch actually is. It's not clear, but uh, not going to be a huge problem for those cavalry. It's mainly the infantry I'm worried about. Really interested to see what happens when they actually reach the wall. So this guy walking very confidently right into this wall and he just goes right through it so it turns out that little part of the fort is actually uh, not solid it's just clipping through so that guy's disappeared sucked into the void on the inside of the tower so now I was curious to see what happens to a man running into one of the solid parts of the wall is he gonna face through it like a ghost well actually it turns out that this part of the wall does remain solid to these troops so that's something at least so he's just going to now get stuck walking into the wall and that's gonna be the fate of most of these troops actually some of them are going to be able though to come over towards this open gate because of their trajectory and possibly walk through the enemy actually have a gatekeeper positioned here for some reason there's uh, well what looks like one soldier standing here but actually I think it's many many soldiers all crammed together onto the same spot whatever the case they don't seem to be too interested in my troops who have also got bunched up right next to them you can actually tell here how it's multiple soldiers because there's so many swords coming out of his hand and there's so many sort of weird glitchiness effects coming over his uniform that it's actually many soldiers just clipping in and out of each other all at once so a mysterious being guarding the door and unfortunately for the enemy it wasn't enough to stop my men getting inside so here they are just streaming in many of them happen to be walking at just the right angle that would take them through this tunnel into the fort and once they're in here well it's just up to the enemy to do something about it they probably can't technically target this unit since it's not supposed to be in the game anymore so my men can just barrel in and do what they like so here's the leader of the attack rushing through the enemy ranks he just pushes past the first few men who are basically just ignoring him by the looks of it he's going to keep powering his way into the center of the fort eventually though he actually impacts someone for some reason this guy is possible to collide with so he suddenly makes an attack throwing the enemy down to the ground as he jams wildly with his bayonet so now he's in a little bit of a situation. He's going to try and start a melee fight in the middle of the enemy's fort with just a few other soldiers coming in to support him. 
probably going to be quite difficult for him. Here he is again. He actually matrixes his way out of the way of that sword blow from that mortar crew, diving backwards and diving through a whole bunch of enemies who just let him pass through their bodies. How nice of them. So he's thrown to the ground by that attack and the mortar crew is now going to ignore him. He's just going to lie down there. Managed to find him eventually. I thought he might have actually died, but he's still there. If you call what we're witnessing here a living being, then he is still alive, stuck in the grass, unfortunately. So he's going to get back up and continue to fight as more of his comrades are streaming in, except for this guy who very unfortunately suffered a heart attack and is going to fall to the ground, which is a little bit suspicious, but hey, things are going wrong. So heart attacks might just be among the collection of glitches that we are experiencing. This guy here, I noticed, was holding one of the enemy troops at bayonet point, sticking it right up to him, but luckily the enemy was cool as a cucumber. He did not care at all about that life-threatening situation, and they're going to continue to fight in melee onwards and onwards. This guy here seemed to take a little bit of a fall. I thought one of my soldiers was about to get stabbed in the back, but the enemy goes flying, and then my soldier does this crazy trick shot. 180 backstab move uh, right in sync definitely right in sync with a guy falling over so i don't know what's going on there just more trouble this guy also in trouble fighting with the invisible men out here in the grass i think what's going on is there's a hidden unit here who i can't see that my men are occasionally trying to fight with or they're just being very dramatic here's this guy taking a fall You'd think he was a professional football player as he dives to the ground with no apparent cause being sent reeling by some invisible attack. So unfortunately for him, the invisible men got to him. One of the Turk's secret weapons, I guess. So really this fight is just going to continue as a glitch fest as we try and get to the end of it. I noticed this one cavalryman had hacked his way inside the enemy's base quite nicely. So a dead body on the ramp up, but more suspicious, the leg sticking out of this ramp. I don't know what that cavalryman would have to say about the story behind that particular situation, but it seems rather gruesome. So you can see he's hacked his way up that ramp, body at the top and a body at the bottom there, the rest of the infantry just letting him chill up there for now. And back over in the main fight, the men inside now just going to be dancing around fighting the invisible men showing off their moves this all by the way is actually sped up footage it was even slower than this while playing i've given it uh, i think 50 percent speed boost on the playback so that we're not here all day so our troops having a great time is what i'm saying overall and of course we finally get to a point when all of our units have left the field but the battle didn't end as i as expected it to i thought that would be the end of it but probably because i technically have that reinforcement unit on the field it wouldn't end you can see them here still marching towards the enemy's breach didn't actually reach luckily so no casualties for them so i had to just quit the game and risk any casualties the game decides it's going to inflict on my men who are still on the field as a result it is technically a defeat but actually the numbers are okay and we actually killed loads of the ottomans thanks to that cannon strategy so went okay as battles go but obviously not exactly what i was expecting so we'll try again in the next episode The unexpected arrival of the West India Company forces in the European theatre sparked outrage amongst the States General. The Company Charter did not give them permission to operate further east than the Straits of Gibraltar. By sailing for Greece on the advice of the confident administration of Madrid, the two Company veterans, Nassau and Calamba, were openly disobeying their parent nation. But it was only the States General who saw it that way, with the rest of the nation hoping that they would bring some of the success seen in the Americas to build on the already historic conquests of Vos. That they placed more faith in these companies than their elected officials was indicative of the attitudes of an increasingly discontent Dutch middle class. Thanks for watching, we'll have another go at Istanbul and Nassau will arrive to attack Greece in the next episode of Sinews of War.